Have you ever wanted to deal as much damage as your DPS players while still putting out a really good amount of healing? How about being super difficult to dive as well as having invincibility to save your team from huge alts? Maybe you want to nearly one-shot the enemy DPS heroes with your ultimate? If this sounds fun to you, then Baptiste might be your new main. But first, before we get into the video, if you haven't already checked out the Game League website, we recently released a section for Overwatch 2 with videos just like this one to make sure that you can climb through the ranks and learn how to play tons of different heroes. We're coming out with new videos every single day, so make sure that you hop over to GameLeap.com and sign up today if you want to start learning how to easily win and dominate your ranked games. Alright, we gotta talk about Baptiste Kit before we get into the specifics on how to play him. His passive is his Exo Boots, which will allow you to crouch and charge up a little icon in the center of your screen. You can use the jump key once the icon is fully charged or even partially charged to launch yourself high up into the air. This is going to be the most important part of Baptiste kit and his main tool for beating dive and pretty much anything else that comes to try and kill you. We're going to go over this more later whenever we get into the playstyle, as I have some great advice for you when it comes to this. Next we have his primary fire, which is actually really really strong. It can deal up to 75 damage per burst, which is 25 damage per bullet. This means that 3 bursts with no headshots are enough to kill any DPS hero and if you land headshots, it can be as little as 2 bursts. This combined with his ultimate can be insanely strong at melting just about any enemy hero, especially DPS heroes. His secondary fire is going to be his main healing tool and shares a different ammo pool than his primary fire. You can heal up to 70 health on direct hits and only 50 health in a small AoE around it, and you'll mostly be using this to obviously heal your team, your tanks, and pretty much anybody who needs it. A really easy tip for this ability is you want to be constantly shooting towards your teammates' feet. Hitting the direct shots on your tanks are easy, but trying to direct a DPS can be tough sometimes. So make Make sure that you're not allowing for your DPS players to die just because you want to hit those direct hits when you could just shoot at their feet and get some guaranteed heals. You can also use this to heal around corners if your teammates aren't peeking. You can easily heal around small corners with that AoE heal that your secondary fire allows. His regen burst can be hard to use on teammates as it only has a 10 meter range, which is decently short in this game, so people need to be pretty close to you for you to actually heal them. Regen burst heals targets based on their current HP percent, so if they are above 50% HP, it will heal them for 50 HP instantly and 50 HP over the next 5 seconds, with 100 HP total. If they are below half health, it heals them for 100 instantly and 50 over the next 5 seconds, with a total of 150 health heal. So no matter when you use it, any nearby teammate will get a guaranteed heal of at least 50 instant health and 50 over the next 5 seconds, unless they are lower than half. This ability is best used to either burst heal a teammate that is very low health, where you can't really heal them with your secondary fire as fast, maybe they're getting focused, or making sure that you're saving this ability for when you get dove. You always really want to be saving this ability as it has a 15 second cooldown and without it, you leave yourself very, very open to being dove. Make sure that you're only really using this ability when you absolutely need to, whether it's healing yourself or healing your other support if they're getting dove. This is going to be somewhat difficult because Immortality Field also has a 25 second cooldown, which means that you have two super super long ability cooldowns and you need to be playing around these as much as you possibly can. With Immortality Field having that 25 second cooldown, you really really need to be saving this one for when it's absolutely needed. Most of the time, you really won't actually need your Immortality Field to save your teammates and it could just be done with a regen burst and some more secondary fires. You really only want to be using Immortality Field when you can predict that your teammate is going to either guaranteed die or the Immortality Field is going to save them. Things for like if your Roadhog gets anti-healed or if the enemy D.Va is alting, maybe the Junkrat's alting, things like that where you really really need that instant invincibility to save your life. One really good tip that I can give you for when you're using your immortality field to make sure that it can't be broken by enemies is to place it behind a corner or wall or small piece of cover that can actually protect it while still giving line of sight to it to nearby teammates. You need to make sure that your teammates actually have line of sight to the center of the disc or else the immortality will not actually apply to them. It doesn't go through any walls, so if you throw it into a corner, make sure that your teammate doesn't go past that corner so that the immortality still applies to them. One last thing about immortality field is that if it's broken with the same damage that would kill you, things like Junkrat Tire and Diva Bomb both destroying that and hitting you at the same time, it will still save your life and the damage will not go through. Because whenever it's destroyed, the immortality field lasts for up to half a second longer than the actual 
actual disc being out. Now let's get into his ultimate. This is insanely good and probably one of the best ultimates in the game and especially good for supporting not only your DPS but your other healer. His ultimate has a double usage for allowing you to melt the enemy DPS and heal your tank up super super easily. This is because it doubles not only the damage you deal while firing through it but also doubles the healing that you deal while firing through it. So this means that placing it down next to you and any other healer next to you will allow you to heal double the amount that you normally would. This is really really strong for turning around team fights. For example, if your tank gets bursted down really hard, you can use your ult and immediately instantly heal him back to full health within a matter of seconds while still being able to deal out an incredible amount of damage to the enemy team. You really want to be using his ultimate in situations where enemies aren't going to easily be able to run away and hide or in situations where the enemies are too close to you to actually effectively use it. While you can easily go through it back and forth and shoot enemies that are trying to run through it to stop you from dealing double damage to them, it's very difficult for your team to actually position around that and if you can just get rushed down as soon as you use it, it's probably not going to be the best idea. Some easy tips for positioning with his ultimate are placing it on high grounds as the enemy is starting to engage in a fight or just placing it down as the enemy is getting onto an objective so that you can easily have line of sight on them while they can't easily close the gap on you. You can actually place it down next to a corner with your immortality field to make sure that you have that five seconds of invincibility while you're peeking through it so that no enemies can easily headshot you and just kill you before you get any value. Okay, now let's talk about some playstyle and how I think to best play him. With his passive allowing you to jump insanely high at literally any given moment, the best way to actually play Baptiste is to be constantly charging your passive up and either jumping when it's fully charged or just waiting for an enemy to dive you so that you can use the jump. One of the easiest ways to play against dive is to simply play on a low ground near a high ground and then staying crouched while you're healing your team, hopping around, having fun. And then as soon as the enemies use their cooldowns to actually dive you, you can simply hop to the high ground and then heal your team and DPS the enemies. You can drop right back down and repeat these steps once the enemies are dead or if they continue chasing you to the high ground. You can constantly keep doing this against pretty much any dive hero and they're going to have to use their cooldowns while all you have to do is crouch and continue to jump. You usually don't want to be starting on the high grounds in situations like this because if the enemies use their abilities to get to you while you're on the high ground, then they can simply just fall off the high ground with you while dealing damage to you constantly and even though you can jump right back up to the high ground, you'll be in a very dangerous situation because the enemies are going to be using their abilities as they're falling to the ground with you. Speaking of high grounds, Baptiste excels on the high ground because of his AoE heals. You can start on a high ground if you find a really good spot to heal your team from and while still being able to DPS enemies that are actually trying to get to you. But you have to really really be careful about enemy heroes like Genji and Winston that can easily dive up onto you and then just drop down with you. So if the enemies are playing heroes like this, maybe you want to find a low ground spot near that really good high ground and then use it whenever the enemies commit to their dive. You also need to make sure that whenever you're playing Baptiste, you're focusing more on healing than actually shooting enemies. Because he deals so much damage, you may find yourself letting teammates die so that you can finish enemies off. And this may seem good in the short term, but keeping your teammates alive is actually the number one priority. In general, it's better to have a teammate alive than an enemy dead in most situations. Make sure that in the comments you guys are telling me what heroes you're playing to rank up this season and who you want to see next. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day. Make sure that you check out our Overwatch 2 website that just released the other day. It is constantly being updated with new guides on every single hero, so make sure that you check out the website link right now in the description or go to gameleap.com and sign up today.